Good day again, viewers, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host for the next half an hour. Today we have a very interesting uh, conversation. Uh, we are talking about feral pigs, that is the wild pigs in the wild. And of course, it's a very good while it's a good delicacy for consumption, but it's causing some serious damage to the farming community. And of course, to discuss this further is Mr. Aloysius Charles, who is the forest officer responsible for a program that looking at the control of the feral pigs. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, tell us about the problems that uh, the feral pigs cause in the wild. Okay, so first uh, in 2018, that's when the problem first uh, started. Um, we really started getting lots of reports uh, about this uh, problem with feral pigs. Mm -hmm. So we had reports from lots of farmers and even some of our experienced forestry officers mm -hmm. would go out in the forest, would uh, have uh, reports about a lot of um, wallowing, which is what you would typically call labui. Lab yes. Mm -hmm. So we'd find quite a, a lot of evidence of such. And we had lots of reports from farmers stating that they had been actually losing some of the crops. Mm -hmm. So that led us back in 2018 to um, start out um, in the investigation as to the issues associated with um, the presence of feral pigs. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted to find out whether we had to get evidence that it, it, this was the, what was actually happening, was actually being done by feral pigs. Okay. So where you, do you find that problem uh, more focused on? What areas? So the areas where feral pigs were most prevalent, uh, what we found was uh, in the Central Forest Reserve between the areas of uh, Millet, uh, Denry, and Soufre. So these were the three areas that were most affected by the feral pigs, according to the information that we picked up. Yeah, and in fact, I know Denry for sure because um, the Minister of Agriculture, Alfred Prosper, had a meeting, a farmers' meeting, some I think last year, in in Denry and. Coming from that meeting, what was highlighted was farmers were complaining that uh, feral pigs were interfering a lot with their crops, you know, and causing some serious economic damage to their crops and, and livelihoods. Uh, I know some years ago, maybe before your time involved, um, they had given some of the older farmers um, firearms to actually control. That helped well. But of course, a lot of those farmers uh, have passed on. So you have a new breed of farmers now. So is I all thinking working with the police to um, arm the farmers to, to control? Because what I was told to the that the, when the, 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 they come in a pack, they can they can attack you and, and run you from your farm. Yes, well, fer feral pigs can be pretty much aggressive, but when it comes to um, handing out of firearms, that is beyond the Department of Forestry. Mm -hmm. So where what we are concerned with is to actually use some of the latest um, technolo technological advancements to be able to help um, so that there, there'll be more detectability. Mm -hmm. And we are working alongside the police, but we are not the ones responsible for issuing firearms. Okay. So in this project, we are going to have the police as one of the stakeholders where they are going to company is in dispatching some of the wild pigs that are detected under this project. So uh, so you all are still having uh, farmers coming to you as we speak with having a serious problem with wild pigs? Yes. 
Well, from back in 2018, we actually did a survey, island-wide survey, where we actually um, interviewed more than 100 farmers. Mm -hmm. And out of that, uh, about 25% of these farmers actually reported that uh, they had so much damage from feral pigs that at one point they had to totally abandon the farms. Leave the farms? Yes. Wow. And there's another problem I, I was told that is caused is um, the excrete and at water intakes a lot and they tend to especially in the in the, in the dry season the wallow in in in, in, um, in, in at, at, at those at those those points uh, you have you all been given that sort of information well yes we have heard ab about a report ab about this but uh, under this project as well we are hoping to ascertain some of these claims because mm -hmm. water quality testing is one of these um, one of the activities that we are going to undertake under the project okay so we are going to be collecting um, samples uh, because we have at least 16 major rivers mm -hmm. that actually start out from the Central Forest Reserve and okay. that is within the same study area. Mm -hmm. So there is the potential that um, these feral pigs might be polluting these uh, water they sources. They defecate in, yes. in the water. when they defecate in the water, it might cause pollution of these water sources. So we are hoping to investigate that, that question and try to get a concrete answer to that question under the project after we have done all of the water quality testing. Okay, so let's go back to the, to the project. So uh, um, the project started of when? As of February 1st, 2020. Tell, tell us about the project. What, 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 um, what, are, what are the objectives of the project? All right. So the name of the project is um, Feral Pig Management for Nature Conservation and Sustaining Rural Livelihoods. Okay. So under this, we have these um, two main objectives. So we actually want to start off a hunting scheme along with um, some of the hunters, where these hunters, they are going to be licensed so they can operate within the forest reserve, hunting the feral pigs. So that would help in decreasing the numbers of of the feral, pig, the feral pigs mm -hmm. and the other component is for nature conservation so we are hoping that this as well would lessen the impact on the on the forest as well so do they apart from uh, doing damage economically to the farmers are they damaging the 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 for, the, for, the forest trees etc Yes, they do cause damage as well because uh, in all of the, the previous studies in other countries as well, we know that they do have the ability to change the forest composition mm. by sometimes feeding too much on one particular species and probably causing even the extinction in some cases of, of these species. So how do they um, damage the, the, those three species? Well, they cause damage sometimes by overfeeding on, uh, on the seeds <coughs> or the young plants of a particular species. So that would not uh, have, that would not leave much space for natural for, for, regeneration for, 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 yeah, for yeah, future yeah, trees yeah, to, yeah. to grow. Okay. And what about the actual damage to the tree back and the trunks and stuff? Do, do they, do, they um, do that too, no? Yes, they do cause damage to the tree backs as well and tree trunks and tree backs mm. and quite a bit of wallowing as well. So that, that, would, that would destroy quite a few seeds from some, some of the more um, endangered plant species as well. Okay. And even the introduction of other species that were never there, like invasive species. Okay. Uh, what was the intention? The, uh, the, inten the intention is to eradicate them completely or to have some measure of control, um, at least to know, okay, uh, in terms of con conservation uh, and, and to add to the wildlife Will it, is, it, is, it, is there a combination of the two or is it, is it complete eradication? Well, we know from studies from other countries all over the world that eradication is uh, very difficult, mm -hmm. but we aim at control and maybe hopefully, depending on the success of the program, maybe eventual eradication. But for now, we are more concerned with um, control of the, of the population. The control of it? Yes. Okay. So further studies as we go along and we pick up more data, it might um, equip us better to be able to deal with the situation at hand and maybe eventually we might get to eradication. But as of now, we're looking at control. Okay, so okay then um, to get that data from from the from the field, what measures are in place to do that? So presently, we are going to be using um, some collars mm -hmm. to be able to track these these pigs, uh, these pigs around, so we be able to know where they spend the time, where they are. We get the exact locations and we able to track them around. And we also hoping to use some real-time cameras as well, so we are able to estimate the, popul the um, size of the groups and the eventual population of the wild pigs. How are you going to get the call on those pigs? 
we are going to um, we working along with the vet unit as well so we are hoping to tranquilize tranquilize a few of the adults mm -hmm. especially the adult females allow them to be able to join back with the groups mm -hmm. and be able to follow them around and to be able to dispatch members of the group as we encounter them okay so if um, uh, one of the pigs you're able to put the collar around it um, can you identify that pig by going there and having a, a tracker on it um, having a, a, a some sort of system that will pinpoint exactly where that pig is? Yes, well, the telemetric um, collar is actually outfitted with um, a, 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 a device that um, you're able to use a GPS and, and go to the location. Okay, okay, okay. And so, are you all going to just kill every one of them, the, 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 the adults, the young ones, I mean, everything? Well, yes. Yes, that's total eradication. Well, we like I said, well, what, what, we are yeah. hoping for control because mm -hmm. eradication, like I said, is a very, very difficult to achieve because mm -hmm. we le lessons learned from all of the other projects that have taken place worldwide. We know that eradication is next to impossible because yeah. these feral pigs, they are pretty smart. Right. And sometimes when you start to track them, then they change their ways. Okay. So that's why we're hoping to use more than one method to actually take out these feral pigs. So how many cameras do you, are you going to be installing in the, in the, in the forest? We are going to start off with um, 10 cameras. Okay. And then the, the camera should be able to tell, well, you're all getting images back to, to base. Yes, it's a real-time camera, so it has the potential to act as um, mo motion sensor, mm -hmm. so it can actually determine uh, when, whenever there's motion in the area. It can take the footage, send the photos directly back to us, and then we can tell based on the location of this camera, we can tell in what area these pigs are and what numbers are in the groups of, of the feral pigs. Okay, so how long is going to take you now to get all of that information, tabulate that, that, that sort of that information, and then what action is taken next? All right, so based on the location of these pigs, then we have um, most of the hunters, we have them from different ranges in mm -hmm. some of these affected communities as well, mm -hmm. the communities that have been affected. Because one of the things that the farmers were doing with uh, a, a little success was that they were contacting the hunters within the areas and then they would go out in the forest and then try to hunt down some of these wild pigs. Mm -hmm. And that's how they were able to chase some of them away because when they come under pressure, they move yeah. to other locations. So we're hoping to use some of that success and plus <coughs> put it together with the new technology that we have so we should be able to pinpoint these pigs a, a lot easier and therefore we should be able to have a lot more control of the situation. Okay, so um, when they are shot in the interior, how do you get um, the carcass back to base because of the, the terrain that you're dealing with and depending on the size of the pig? So you're going to actually, um, you know, get them cleaned up and cut it, cut into into various parts and take them back down the base yes so you're, you're, are you not carrying the whole pig back no well the, oh yes the, the the pig has has to be carried back so yeah. because of course um the hunters are going this is one of the components of the um livelihoods component mm -hmm. So the hunters are going to be using this meat and they are, it's going to be certified by environmental health and these hunters will be able to sell them back and to make some, some money. Okay, so, so, so it's more or less a form of livelihood for the, the hunters themselves? Yes, it is. Okay, so is that what, in that, in that project, I mean, you all have, you all, so you all have brought in stakeholders, so you all have brought in the Ministry of Health, you all brought in um, the Fed Division, and yes. who else? Well, Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the police as well. All right. And the hunters? Yes, the hunters. Okay. All right. So after you've collected that data, then you'll move in to various areas knowing where they are. So it's now it is slaughter time. Yes. <laughs> um, those pigs, basically, um, they were domesticated and they just escaped to the wild, right? And that's why it's, that's why it is. Yes, over time. O over time. Yes. Okay. And and they, because of the environment, they are able to change the whole body structure, you know, and and the whole the whole thing just change. Well, pigs are able to adapt very easily to any environment that they introduce. Mm -hmm. to. And they, they multiply very quickly too, eh? Very. Because quickly, it yes. is, a, I think, based on 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 my my zoology and my animal husband three days it takes three months three weeks three days for for, for a gestation period so, so once 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 it once um they get service then so in three months three weeks three days you, you have you have a young one yes and they and they, they and they multiply a lot very 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 quickly 
Okay. So you so can have multiple liters just within one year. Within yeah, within a year, uh, coming from so many various sows. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, we do for our first break. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back very soon. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development continues placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. It's our prosperity, our future. Livestock production is a support program offered by the ministry. It guarantees 28.65% and 40% market share for poultry and swine production respectively. There is ongoing disease surveillance and treatment, improved bloodline support, laboratory support, training and technical support. You can learn more on livestock production. Contact the Chief Veterinary Officer at 468-5620 for further information. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move, of course. I am Philip Sidney, and with me from the Forestry Department, Mr. Lucius Charles, who is a forest officer. And he, we were just talking about the feral pigs and the, the, the sort of damage they do to the f farmers' crops and affect their livelihoods. And the aim here is to destroy the herd completely, eradication. Okay, um, Mr. Charles, are there in apart from the being I call them vegetarian because they eat a lot of berries and and seeds and of course the dashing and the yam from the farmers. Um, are they threatened by any other wild animals in in, in the wild? No. No, well, feral pigs wouldn't uh, belong to the, this environment naturally, so they don't have any, any predators mm -hmm. wi within this environment. Okay. But you call them vegetarians, and I wouldn't quite call them vegetarians because we know that they, are, they also eat um, meat items as well. So if they so are they to do, get do some young animals young on the animals, forest floor would, as well, like what? They would, they would eat them. Like what? what are, so what we them? might have what? Lizards, uh, young birds, some, some fledglings, because mm. some of the fledglings tend to spend a few days on the forest floor before they can actually find their wings and take off. Mm. Mm, and if wow. a feral pig were to come across one, then we know they definitely... Can, they can get eggs and stuff around yes, the place also. Yes, eggs from all, all the species as well. Mm, okay, okay, okay. So they would tend to consume literally anything so, that so they, they can come so, across. So, so they, are they are multi? Yes. That way. Okay. Um, is there, have you all, I don't know if you know, but um, will the survey capture, for example, the movement of the of the animals, say from the forest areas to the farmers' holdings? Is it is it done just uh, arbitrarily, or is there some time of the year when they will migrate from the forest, deep forest, and come to the location where farmers are farming? Well, once we've outfitted these pigs with the telemetry collars, mm -hmm. then these telemetry collars will be able to give us uh, 24 hours of information as to what exactly the pig does, when it does, and we, like I said, the location, so it can tell us everything about that. So presently, we don't have all of that information available, so we're hoping that the, this would actually shed some light on the subject area. Okay. So by the, by the time that the project is done, we're hoping to have a lot more infi information as to the whereabouts of the pig, what time of day, where exactly they, they spend their time and doing what. Have you all had any meetings with the farmers in the various locations, apprising them as to the program that you all about to, or you all have been, you have started implementing? Well, we are in contact with a few of the farmers and hunters, and we hoping to have our first stakeholder meeting very early next month. So then we should have the discussion on that, and we will have the discussion on the project outcomes and objectives, all the same within our first stakeholder meeting. Okay, and so so, the, the, so you all moving from say from Millet, you are going to Denry in, uh, to have meetings with the farmers. Well, we hoping to have our first meeting at our at our um, base location in Union. Okay. So we will bring in the farmers uh, to this location, and then we'll have the discussion based on wh what we expecting from the project. And well, we have met, like I said, we had discussions with farmers all over the island when we had that um, sur first survey what back in 2018. What, what what that first survey? What 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 was it all about? Basically, so it was hoping to capture um, information about 
um, the feral pigs and how, how much damage that they were causing to some of, some of the crops. And we found, well, a lot of the root crops, farmers that were planting root crops like um, tanya, dashing, sweet potatoes, those were a lot of, of the, those that were being damaged, even yams. Mm -hmm. So there's, that's where we had a, a lot of the damage, but it was mainly from farmers that were, had their farms in close proximity to the forest reserve. Okay. But are, are you all, um, as part of the program, um, the question of consumption, um, I know it's a delicacy for lots and lots of persons now. Uh, when you hear about Koshomao and the texture of the, the carcass, you know, you, we know it has very um, a thin, a thin layer of fat as opposed to the domesticated one. Um, I all encouraging people in, in the communities, you know, to actually, you know, um, prepare dishes and so at least that may encourage the hunters to go out more and, and, and hunt, no? Well, yes, we hoping under the program once we've uh, once we've um, gotten the ball rolling that we hoping that's uh, w one of the things that we we can actually get a bit more of. Okay. Uh, uh, hunters, how many hunters you would see, for, for example, that um, that are in St. Lucia and they were actually going out there to hunt wild pigs? Is this something that is that, that's I mean prevalent? It's not as prevalent as it used to be because we had a lot of the older folks who used to be hunters and like you said, most of them would have had uh, their licensed firearms and mm -hmm. of course the tradition has kind of fallen over time. But at uh, present, we have at least about um, 10 hunters that we hoping to work with under this project. Okay. All right. So maybe in time as we go along, maybe we might get uh, other persons who have a bit of interest and maybe we can get a few more hunters coming in. Great. Have you all ever had a problem um, see, for example, we have tourists who are going through the tracks and to actually go bird watching um, to see the, the beauty of the forest, the flora and the fauna. Um, have you have had any experience where um, they were attacked by the feral pigs? We haven't had any cases of attacks, but I can tell you for sure that yes, sometimes being out on, on these excursions, we have encountered wild pigs in the past. Uh -huh. But there was no attack on, on the part of the wild pigs, so, so they, thankfully. They, they, run, they run away? Yes. <laughs> So you don't think, I mean, I, but what I know from, uh, I've heard, heard the stories from farmers, eh? um, they, when they come, with, they come like a pack, you know, and, they, and they're hungry, you, the farmer, have to run from, from, from your farm. Well, yes, sure, because these, these wild pigs, they can get pretty huge, and I mean, they, these, um, they can cause quite a bit of damage mm -hmm. if they are to attack. So the best thing is, if you encounter a wild pig, the best thing is to run away if you have to. Okay, okay. Because it's going to be a difficult fight. If you're not under to um, take on a wild pig, it's okay. best that you move away. So have you all, um, uh, is there any restriction, I mean, prior to um, the project that you are handling right now, with anybody going into the forest, um, and hunt and hunt hunt wild pigs, or do you do you, do they need a license to go and hunt on the pigs? Well, it has always been uh, according uh, according to law that it, it is prohibited to just enter the forest reserve without uh, first seeking permission from the Department of Forestry. Mm -hmm. So you know, so so one can just go in go in, in the forest and hunt wild pigs, knowing that I mean the problem exists and it will be a, a, at least because going to get a get a license. I mean, I don't, I, well, I don't know, you can guide me in that regard. Um, how long does it take you to get a license? It wouldn't take long to get a license because um, the chief forestry officer can actually issue a license to someone oh, who wishes to get officer. a license, okay, yes. Okay. But uh, like I said, it is strictly prohibited to just enter the forest reserve without first contacting the Department of Forestry. So what happens if uh, somebody goes in there and then you get the person coming out with a whole set of wild meat coming out? What will you do? Well, I guess we're from <laughs> wild pigs. <laughs> but if it, if it were anything uh, apart from wild pigs, then uh -huh. yeah, I mean, uh, you could carry some fines. Uh, there can be a maximum of $5,000 that you can be if charged for, for, wild, one, with wild, for an wild. offense. No, I said if it were wild pigs, uh -huh. then of course we can look past that because we're trying to get oh, rid of the wild pigs. I'm saying, yes. yes, but yes. anything apart from the wild pigs because all of these other species in there are actually indigenous species. Uh -huh. So we wouldn't uh, encourage anybody to kill any of the other indigenous species that are protected by law. Okay. What other uh, species of wild animals in the forest that one can go in and, and, um, and shoot? and hunt. 
Well, according to according to law, the only unprotected species of wildlife here eh, are the Ferdinands, rats, mice, and the mongoose. Oh, okay, unprotected. Unprotected. All other species of wildlife on Saint Lucia are protected by law. Okay, but you, but but you knew, you you are aware of um, uh, persons eating the boa, and if if caught, right? Well, we have heard uh, so some reports about that, but then as uh, as long as we can get any information that points in that direction and we can get any evidence of such, then it would be a chargeable offence. It is a, okay, 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 okay. Wow, because I know people love the delicacies and they try all sorts of you know, stuff. Um, apart from hunting, man, man hunting the, the wild pig, um, uh, do you have any, like I said earlier on, I, can the snake kill uh, 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 the wild pig? It is, it is a possibility, yes. Have you all ever, your, in, in your survey, are you, uh, can you pick up, pick, pick, pick this up too in, 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 in your, in, under this project? Well, but if we... Other than shooting the animal, I mean, is there any other way that, I mean, you, I heard you mention there are no other species that will attack them as Yes. Such. So we're looking at a few methods of trying to tackle the, the feral pig population. So for one, we'd uh, also use some rope traps and there had been some measure of success with, with that in, in the past at one point mm. that we use. Uh, rope, tra rope traps that are actually um, attached to a tree mm -hmm. and then they, they would have we would bit these traps so you put like uh, bananas or fruits mangoes different things that uh, that are edible that they can feed on mm. and as they actually walk through feeding then it, they would be caught by some of these uh, specialty ropes that would be very difficult to us okay but we would definitely have to try more than one method so we also have um, pitfall traps that we intend to use as well what do you call that a pitfall trap so oh, yeah, you yeah, dig yeah. in these so pits and cover them with leaf litter yes and they fall down in the hole Yes. All right. Have you? I, I mean, I noticed well, again. That's that's in the states where you have ropes, as you mentioned. But instead of having them trapped in the rope, but the ropes will actually capture them and lift them off the ground. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's another method. So we'll look at these uh, different methods mm -hmm. because, like I said, maybe if you use one method too much, then these pigs they are pretty smart and they can adapt pretty easily. So then they would realize, oh, this is a trap, and then they would just go around it. They would they would use other methods. So you have to use more than one method to actually get right. rid of them. And you'll not. And of course, encourage uh, beet with uh, poisonous beet and stuff like that. No, no, because poisonous can, poisonous beet can, can actually attack, affect other other species other of animals other within species the reserve. Animals, yes, yes. That's another, that you have to you'll have, you'll have to watch. Um, but then, I believe that you know. You all need to come up with, apart from getting the hunters to go out there, like you mentioned, and, and, and other innovative ways. Um, uh, can you also go and, apart from using using the the guns, can you use um, you know your, your tranquilizers to, tran to actually bring them down and after slaughter them? No, I don't know. Well, to tranquilize it, you would need to be there as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just like uh, taking them out with, 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 with a, a gunshot. Gun to it. Yeah, so the best other thing to do. So to get them out of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is what which you think is most expensive? Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms um, using tranquilizer or using 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 um, using bullets. Well, you're trying to kill them, so uh, using a bullet uh, yeah, definitely would would, would dispatch the animal, would get would get rid of them if, okay. if it's if it's properly hit. Okay. But the tranquilizers, we're only hoping to use them for the individuals that we're hoping to put the telemetric collar on, because we would need to detain them that we can put the telemetric collar on safely, okay. right. and then allow them to go and rejoin the group, so that we can find find How long that project? the telemetric collar. The project is expected to last over 15 months. 15 months. Yes. Okay, and it is funded by whom? The St. Lucia National Conservation Fund. Okay, all right. Um, well, any final words from you? Well, we are uh, we looking to undertake the Feral Pig Project, and we hoping that we can get um, a lot of public interest in it. So we hoping that persons would um, well. We are trying to work with um, the St. Lucia Tourism Authority as well, hoping that uh, we can actually get some persons to develop some delicacies, some recipes for the wild pig meat. We know that it is a lot more lean than Definitely. what uh, what we actually have domesticated. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that persons will get used to the idea and that, well, we can develop the feral pig industry and hopefully make better livelihoods for some of these hunters out there. Definitely. So a lot of people like Byron and them who are going to be hunting. I, I, that's why I go by Byron and get mine in. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, he, <laughs> he's one of those persons that we have on there as well. Oh, definitely. Well, Charles, thank you for coming on the program. I wish you success with the project, and I wish you all well. Okay? Thank you, sir. You've been watching Agriculture on the Move.
Thank you for viewing the program. I would like you to continue to uh, those hunters go out and hunt the feral pigs. You know, Koshamawa Ibo, c'est manger. That's manger. If they sont manger bien, nous qu'ai tué tout ça qui en forest là, you va qu'ai dommager uh, plantation farmer. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye and see you again. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.